Well, Judge Jackson's Senate confirmation hearing did get underway about 90 minutes ago, and already we're seeing some lines of attack emerging from Republican members on the Judiciary Committee. I understand the importance of zealous advocacy, but it appears that sometimes this zealous advocacy has gone beyond the pale. And in some instances, it appears that your advocacy has bled over into your decision-making process as a judge. All right, so now we got Ketanji Brown Jackson on the way to the Supreme Court. And of course, we're going to have some opposition, but let's take a look at the opposition. So John Cornyn, Lindsey Graham. John Cornyn saying that, you know, it looks like uh, her beliefs sometimes go beyond the pale. And of course, Lindsey Graham saying, yeah, the most radical elements of the Democrat Party to the judiciary system and the most radical beliefs on how a judge should behave. And they go with you like, dude, shut up, like shut I, look, the Republican Party, look, y'all put three people onto the Supreme Court under Donald Trump. Three. And this woman, who has a history of being a public defender, you know, that being a complete contrast to typically what's on uh, the Supreme Court bench, her having an actual history of defending people might add a little bit of legitimacy to the Supreme Court. Now we're facing a choice sponsored by the most radical elements of the Democratic Party when it comes to how to be a judge. They have the most radical view of what a judge should do, and you were their choice. Oh, and also let's not forget that the Republican Party is actively trying to get rid of abortion. They're actively trying to eliminate Roe v. Wade, which I keep warning y'all they will do, and I expect them to move that far. So. It's like, you know, y'all don't have a leg to stand on. The, the Republican Party is so ridiculous at this point. I j just, just, just shut up. And let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, one of those, you know, three Supreme Court justices that uh, was put onto the Supreme Court under the Trump administration, Brett Kavanaugh. Lest we not forget all of the swirling controversy that he had around his name. And his let's, let's try to make some sense of it together. Nobody has ever been confirmed to the federal judiciary in the United States. Um, after every, anything even close to this happened in the U.S. Senate while that nominee was being assessed for the job. My family and my name have been totally and permanently destroyed <coughs> by vicious and false additional accusations. You have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy. Since my nomination in July, there's been a frenzy on the left to come up with something, anything, to block my confirmation. People have been willing to do anything to make any physical threat against my family, to send any violent email to my wife, to make any kind of allegation against me and against my friends, to blow me up and take me down. You sowed the wind for decades to come, I fear that the whole country will reap the whirlwind. And of course, Amy Coney Barrett, who was, you know, just rushed and tossed on the Supreme Court, like Amy, Amy, who, 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 what just, oh, and there she is, she's on the Supreme Court. As you may have noticed, the news today has been dominated by the confirmation hearing for the staunchly conservative judge that Republicans are dead set on ramming through an incredibly accelerated timeline. That's Judge Amy Coney Barrett. And you've got to ask, why are they doing this? 77% want the Senate to pass another pandemic relief package, which they have so far refused to take up. 66% want it before a vote on Judge Barrett. And with two senators on the committee having tested positive for the virus just in the last 10 days, 54% uh, say in-person hearings should be delayed. You know, it's things like that. Oh, 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 and uh, lest we not forget, um, you know, Merrick Garland. You know, let, let's not forget about how he was just straight up blocked from his hearings. And, you know, he just was like, nah, Mitch McConnell was like, nope, no, we're not having this. Oh, and um, also let's talk a little bit about Lindsey Graham, how he's just a complete bootlicker for Trump. Before Trump became president, he was like, oh, no, we shouldn't do it because if we do it, he's going to destroy the party. And then now he's come in, he's destroyed the party. And well, you know, Lindsey Graham just can't stop kissing his Thus far, the Biden administration has actually done a great job appointing federal judges. In fact, he's outpaced the Trump administration in doing so in terms of circuit court judges and district judges and things like that. But, you know, of course, the fact remains that the Supreme Court is very imbalanced, but he also delivered on his promise to appoint a black woman. And again, she's someone who has a history of public defense. She's someone who, 
you know, isn't a corporate lawyer, isn't someone who's trying to do things like, you know, like remove women's access to abortion and, you know, siding with corporations time after time after time, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, we have a little bit of a balance. However, you know, there's so much work to be done. You know, the, the, the longer I work in politics, the more I see that just the total system itself that we live under, our, our election system, our voting system, um, just how we do damn everything has to be completely gutted and changed. And obviously that won't happen quickly and suddenly, but we really got to keep working towards it because the socioeconomic system that we live under and the political system that we live under simply doesn't function.